Hi, this is Real World Audio. Today I am answering an email. And the email is from Igor. And, and he is about to embark on his quest to build uh, both loudspeakers and an amplifier from a kit. So a single and lead triode. And he's looking for a single driver uh, full range loudspeaker uh, to, to, to match it. And he is asking. Uh, uh, how can he go on about that? And um, and basically he mentions uh, two things: uh, uh, audio nirvana and louder drivers. And uh, I'm going to share a little bit what I know of drivers and driver selection. And uh, I'm not going to answer. Uh, this question that do you think I can unlock the potential of a single ended triode amplifier with an audio nirvana based system? I, I cannot truly directly answer this question because I never played around with audio nirvana drivers. And uh, but yet, what I will do is uh, I, uh, I have looked into the audio nirvana drivers, did a couple hours research on them. And, and I'm going to share with you what I think of those drivers based on, on the, the photos that they posted on them, uh, which relate to the build quality of the driver and what, what information they shared about it, about the parameters and measurements. And, uh, and with that, I can tell you what they will be able to do for you and and also what will be those parts where uh, you will have to adjust the design to to be suitable for those drivers and uh, what i will also do is that i will share uh, what i have been playing around with uh, what i have been found to ma uh, to be an, an excellent uh, match loudspeaker match with a, with a low power single ended uh, triode amp and um, that is going to be my void pipe series and uh, i'm going to post the vid start posting the videos shortly those will be probably i think at least 20 videos or more and and uh, I think some of you are really overjoyed with this. Others said, "Oh no, geez, we have to uh, suffer through that many videos." But um, I think I I can without shame uh, tell that probably I am the void pipe, maybe the number one void pipe expert on the planet uh, at this point, uh, or at least I don't know anyone who has even the fraction of an experience with void pipes, as as I do. Uh, and uh, and and I really tried out many things. I have uh, designed and built about a dozen of them for me and my friends. And and uh, and I can share what works and what doesn't work. And I've also experienced a lot of void pipe incarnations, which I did not build, but I heard that someone else built, someone else designed. And I can tell you that uh, the void pipe is, is, is something of a, um, it's kind of like an uh, Arabian horse. It, it's, uh, you know, you need to know how to tame it and how to approach it. Because if, if you approach it uh, from the wrong angle, it will just run away from you and you will never catch it. But if you know how to treat it, how to handle it, how to build it, how to match it, then uh, it will uh, just spirit you towards your goal faster than you ever thought imaginable. And uh, But right now, this is not the uh, Void Pipe series. Now I want to dedicate this video, and as I know myself, it will become a video series, probably at least four videos or more, on audio Nirvana drivers. So I will tell you what it what they will be able to do for you and where uh, you will have to um, be cautious about the application. So so let's go uh, to first of all where did I want to go? Uh, 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 here here we go. I have a tons of tabs open because I'm going to just be 
moving around between them. So here this is Audio Nirvana's uh, homepage and, and look at that. Now we can start drooling because they, they look like uh, very nice uh, drivers, uh, very nicely built. You see that they have the nice uh, uh, pleated cloth surrounds, uh, they have uh, paper cones, and I think these, uh, especially the paper cone, to me, that's the number one requirement for a driver, uh, to sound natural. Uh, we can choose other driver cone materials. Today's uh, the number one favorite is some sort of plastic material, or maybe Kevlar. BMW in, uh, started using Kevlar, uh, but I have to add that uh, whatever material you are choosing, you are uh, introducing its uh, uh, resonant properties, its inherent distortion characteristics into the sound. So basically, if you are introducing a plastic, then what it does to the sound of the violin, for example, it is like adding a thin layer of plastic coating on the violin. That's how the violin will sound with a driver that, uh, that is a plastic driver trying to reproduce a violin. Or if you have a Kevlar driver, then uh, imagine that uh, you put a um, bulletproof jacket on, on the violin, a, a thin one, but you put one and then how it will sound with that. Uh, it, it will kill a lot of harmonics and, and, and it will sound uh, quite a bit uh, plasticky and sterile. Uh, yet, now let's see, now we are back to the, the paper selection. And, uh, and, and paper is basically a material that has fibers, long fibers. And, uh, and the longer the fibers, the better the mechanical stability of the cone is. So that's why we cannot just say paper cone drivers uh, are the same. Because when you read paper cone, then it can mean vastly different things. Uh, between two different brands. Uh, uh, it's, 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 it's a tremendous diversity between the paper types that are available. But uh, I would say that all of them just rank equally high on the natural tone scale. So what you will get is, uh, is natural sound. And I, under that I mean uh, a reproduction which is closest in tonality to a live, unamplified instrument. And when you have a plastic driver, yes, that uh, has the possibility in itself to, to grant you a higher textural resolution, but in uh, practicality, uh, the vast majority of plastic drivers, uh, what they do really is they don't offer a big, greater textural resolution as the best of the paper cones, but what they do is that they suppress a lot of the uh, harmonic content and with that the presentation uh, sounds much more sterile, much more uh, mechanical and gives us a fake illusion that it's much more precise. So. Looking at the magnet structures, we can you can see that these are ferrite magnets. You can see that there is like a, a, a wide pancake-like thing and, and the band around it. So that band, that is the ferrite magnet. And the, and the motor assembly is basically inside that. And, uh, and this is an Alnico driver and you can identify them that they are not flat flat and wide, but they are skinny and tall. So here they, they work in, a, in, a, in the opposite manner. So here for the ferrite drivers, you have the ferrite on the outside and the pole piece, the metal piece in the center. With the Alnico, we have the magnet in the center and, and the pole piece, the metal on the outside. So the uh, position of the magnet and, 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 and the pole piece has been reversed. So the Alnico was the older one and the ferrite magnet, that's the newer technology. And um, 
why they did that I, I don't exactly know because if you keep the magnet in the center then uh, that allows you to achieve uh, high flux densities more easily than using this technology so for this you need much more magnet compared to using uh, that way so it's not not entirely clear why the industry switched to that i think it's probably because it's easier to assemble that maybe someone knows more about that but uh, that's how things are so here the alnico magnet is at the very center right there so here we got a few examples they have drivers you can make a subwoofer with a lot of uh, nice different uh, loudspeakers built by the drivers look nice coil samurai style the center that looks like a louder horn uh, a cabinet with uh, an audio nirvana driver so you can adapt it to uh, louder horn cabinets and that looks like like a tannoy cabinet so basically you can use a cabinet like a tannoy and uh, and use it with the audio nirvana drivers if you want to that looks like another uh tannoy cabinet i think maybe that's like like the churchill and that's like the westminster westminster uh, there are some that you can use for open baffles best reflex here you see the two front ports so so uh, there's like tremendous diversity you can basically build anything you want with them or, or within a, a wide range, like either horn loading them, or bass reflex, or open baffle. And uh, they have two different series for their drivers. They have the classic series, and they have the super series. And uh, I will look into here, uh, the, the classic series drivers, they have four of them. And we will look into all four and and just compare them. And I will do a shootout and and uh, kind of uh, just from the data uh, that we will see, I will just name the two winners which I think are the most promising to play around with, and uh, will give the best result for for most people who are looking for. But I will also tell you. Uh, what are the benefits and what are what uh, we can call as shortcomings in under certain circumstances but under other circumstances uh, those can be actually beneficial so so that's why i do not name any driver any brand any application as the best because it truly depends on what what you want to hear so it's like uh, when i say the best or someone says the best is like uh, me using Irvin's uh, food analogy is like me recommending you a hamachi kama recipe and uh, yeah I, I might love hamachi kama but uh, another person maybe never even heard of that dish and uh, and maybe you would like uh, like steamed sea bass or or a uh, or a trout or or a garlic ahi or something like that uh, and uh, and in that case, uh, really, my, my job here is to uh, to tell you, to show you how you can pick for yourself, how you can pick a driver that will fit your needs. And, uh, and let's look into that without further ado at the next part, because now we are at 13 minutes. So thank you, Warwick, for your awesome question, and we'll go into the nitty-gritty in just a second.